Morning, ladies and gentlemen of the media, and welcome to another daily press brief. What is the first March, twenty twelve? I am Sergeant Wayne Meister, Public Information Officer of the TPS. I will now proceed to give you some information. Around eleven thirty a.m. on Wednesday, twenty nine February, twenty twelve, Acting Inspector Citeran and Corporal Lewis and officers of the Arima CID were inquiries on at Rose Drive Extension, Carapo, when they observed a man standing in the yard with a bag in his hands. The man dropped the bag and ran. The officers gave chase and held him a short distance away. On checking the bag, it was found to contain one Smith & Wesson revolver with five rounds of .3 ammunition. The man, 30 years old of Carabao District, is presently assisting police on inquiries. Around 12.30 a.m. today, the victim, a retired police officer, parked his vehicle at Main Road, Chase Village, and went to make a purchase at a nearby parlor, leaving the key to his Toyota Corolla motor vehicle in the ignition. The vehicle was valued $150,000. When a man entered the vehicle and drove away with scene. <laughs> at the same time, police patrol was passing, and the victim made a report. An all points bulletin was immediately issued, and Superintendent Abraham, Sergeant Hussein, and a party of officers who were on exercise in the Chase Village district responded and spotted the vehicle. A chase ensued, and the man abandoned the vehicle at Augustini settlement and ran into some nearby bushes. With the assistance of the canine officers and with the dog named Jack, the man 27 years of Orangefield Road, Chase Village, was arrested and taken to the Freeport Police Station, where he was charged for the offense of last in the motor vehicle. He was to appear before the Chevrolet's Management Court today. He said officers, under the supervision of Superintendent Johnny Abraham, during the period 10 p.m. on Wednesday, 29 February 2012, and 2 a.m. today, arrested 10 men between the ages of 20 and 35. One of them is St. Lucian National. The others from Chase Village, Freeport, and Carlsonfield districts were arrested in connection with a series of house break-ins in the Freeport, Carlsonfield, and surrounding districts in recent times. Two air pistols, 10 sanding machines, seven DVD players, two television sets, and over $250,000 worth in jewelry were recovered. And that was from several houses that was broken into in those side areas. In addition to that, three men between the ages of 20 and 25 from Arima, Komutu, and Enterprise districts will appear before the Shogunas Manager Court today charged for 13 counts of robberies in the Central Division and 9 counts of false imprisonment arising from a report of robbery where the Orangefield Road family was tied up and robbed on the 23rd of February 2012. That family was also robbed of two vehicles and a quantity of jewelry. Most of the jewelry were recovered by the police. The two vehicles were also recovered by police in the Arima and Komuto districts. So with that, we want to personally commend Superintendent, Senior Superintendent Johnny Abraham and his team of officers of the Central Division for the hard work and we urge them to continue the excellent work. And finally, in Port of Spain Division, around 8 p.m. on Sunday, 26 February 2012, four men boarded a taxi at Charlotte Street, Port of Spain, to be taken to San Juan. Upon reaching the vicinity of the service station along the Beetham Highway, one of the men seated behind the driver pointed an object to his head and announced a hula. His accomplice then ordered the driver out of the vehicle and one of the men took control of the vehicle. They were joined by five other men from the Beetham Gardens area who then proceeded to rob the driver and two passengers of a quantity of cash and other valuables. The men then ordered the driver two and two passengers out of the vehicle and drove away with the vehicle which later crashed into a wall. A report was made on the Bessel Street Police Station and inquiries were conducted, which resulted in the arrest of a 16-year-old from Beetham Gardens who was charged for the offence and will appear before the Port of Spain Magistrate Court today. That is the end of this morning's brief, and we are now open for, for any questions that you may have. <coughs> I just want to follow up on one thing that you said before we get into the juicy stuff. Uh, the men, the ten men who were held in the uh, up for the Carson Field, uh, I had asked this question earlier. 
uh, what what was it that they were all from around? You only said that one person was from Saint Lucia, but were they from around the country? Were they from the area? No, I mentioned that um, they were from. One was our Saint Lucia National, right, right. and the other was from the Freeport Chase Village and Casting Okay, and, they, and was it some kind of syndicate that they were running? Or was it? Did, did they have any? Was it what? What? Is there any more information that you have on that? Because they were being terrorized for quite some time by, by, by these people. And when we asked about it earlier this week, you said you didn't know about it. So can you give more um, details on the arrest, how it went on? Was it a sting operation, that kind of stuff? Well, generally, it was an operation. Um, th these persons were being monitored for a while. And normally, when we, we arrest persons and they are interrogated, it, it's a person will be arrested for probably one break-in. And as a result of interrogation, it will lead to several other break-ins based on the information that we received on So that I, I, I cannot confirm and say that it was a syndicate. However, um, intelligence workers carried out investigations, were carried out extensive investigations, as a matter of fact, which would have led to solving of a series of break-ins in those areas. And the residents have been given a uh, chance. <clears throat> Are they being advised to go and reclaim their materials? Is it being held in evidence? What was going to happen with the residents and this stuff? Of course. Well, um, <coughs> the, the items is a matter of um, exhibits. Of course, persons will be calling later on to identify the items. All right, big question now. Uh, TCL, the police are being accused of brutalizing the, the striking workers at TCL. Uh, the police were supposed to make a statement today. Is there any statement at this time? Well, what we can say is that the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, um, we have a presence at that location, and our presence is simply to maintain law and order, to ensure that there is no breach of the peace. One will recognize the fact that police officers will have to use a reasonable force if events or any um, incident may arise. An investigation has since been launched into that matter uh, to unearth um, the facts. We are also saying to that the members of the we are the TTPS, we are governed by a use of force policy, and within that policy, officers are guided as to how to operate in instances. We also say to that our use of force policy will not condone the use of any excessive force by any member of the Trinidad Tobago Police Service. In this case, uh, the footage that was there was grainy and it spoke. It spoke a lot. Just looking at that footage, do do the police are the police um, saying that they condone the action that was taken? Were they acting within their their rights of, as we say, reasonable force? What I can say is that an investigation has been launched and we need to get more information, more evidence, more um, information input into that matter so that we can come to our decision. The NATO had actually called for the police service to, to be removed from, from that area. Will that happen? We have a particular purpose there, and that's, that's to ensure that the peace is being kept. Um, you must recognize the fact, and you'll appreciate the fact, that the tension is very high in that area. And things can get out of hand probably at any time. So we, there, there is need for police presence at TCL. OK, this is really short. So um, the guy from Tobago was on the United program during the week saying that officers, when they do their drug busts, they resell the same as any marijuana the coke that they have seized. What, um, what assurances does the TTPS give to the public that when the fight against drugs in the country is carried out, that the drugs that are seized are destroyed. Because I know when you read sometimes, you say that if the marijuana was either A, destroyed, or, C, or B, seized. So probably after the case, it is destroyed. What assurances do we have that these drugs are destroyed and are not being sent back out into the public? You, ha you have our utmost assurance that drugs that are seized, uh, you have drugs that will be used as uh, for exhibits, and you have an uh, completion, those drugs will be destroyed. Okay. You have our assurance. I have a follow-up to the Sorry. <coughs> uh, you say that it's Sorry. an investigation is being launched. The officers in question, are they being transferred or are they still located at TCL at this time? Could you rephrase the question? The question, the officers who would have been involved in the, the fracas yesterday or day before, have they been transferred as the investigation is going on, or are they still based at TCL uh, manning that area? Because you say there's still officers there. Well, we, we'll have 
you remember officers will be working on on a daily basis, you know, 24-7, so we'll have different shifts. So we have a different shift that is working. But those particular officers, would they still take up a shift at any point in time, especially with an investigation of police brutality ongoing? Will those same officers still be there, or will they have to be put somewhere else and new officers now? Well, I, I, we'll have new officers coming in for now. That's what I guess. Good morning, Sergeant Meister. Um, I just have to ask, just what do you, what would you describe as reasonable force? Reasonable force is the force that an officer will use as a, as a result of force that has been met to him. So the officer, it's, it's a judgment call that the officer will make. And of course, he's guided by our use of force policy. For example, um, the mere presence, officer presence, that in itself is a use of force. And you'll appreciate the fact that sometimes there's the mere presence of a police officer could deter person's actions. However, um, sometimes you'll have um, persons, the members of the public, who will not adhere to the police officer's presence or the police officer's communication. So for example, if a police officer is about to arrest someone and that person is not a compliant suspect, meaning that they wouldn't comply and they start to resist, it means to say that the level of resistance that has been met to the officer must be matched by that particular officer. It must be reasonable in order to apprehend or take control of the suspect and also take in consideration to that in the protection of the officer's life and the protection of other person's life. Um, Chamber of Baran, 95 News. Um, officer Weiser, allegedly a child was found in school with three different types of ammunition. Um, is, is this true? We, 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 we had a a release on that yesterday. Is there any more information? The information no, child? but um, a person, that person was charged. He was charged? Yes. As a minor? 14, 14 years. <laughs> Take um, one more question. We asked about TCI already, yes? I think it's covered. So, wait. Now, with regard to the the uniform issue. Now, we've heard that the uniforms came in and they had been warehoused, but because of the resistance from the police service commission to implement the use of this uniform, is there any change of plans that the uniforms still going to be used? As, or, are they, or has it just been um, put on hold pending any kind of um, resolution with the BSC? Well, once there are meaningful changes taking place in the TTBS, we have a lot of issues that we'll have to deal with, all right? And um, if, if you're changing the uniform in the TPS, that means that we can't just, you can't just change uniform as that. I mean, we must have certain legislation. So we still have um, certain things that we need to work out before anything with that uniform issue can come up. There is a report of uh, during a search of a man's house, an officer with the mobile police station found that he had a phone ticket but jewelry in the value of 80000 And that officer and others went with that ticket, got the jewelry, and they now brandish it as their own. Have you heard anything on this? We have some information, but it's not conclusive as yet, so uh, release will be made on that either tomorrow before coming days. Final question? And that's it, ladies give and gentlemen. It, give it, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, nothing today? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending another daily press brief. This is a, 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 a very <laughs> historic day, I must say. No questions from Mr. Samuel McKnight. So again, we <laughs> look forward to see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. Um, let us continue to partner with the TBS to reduce crime and enhance security and safety in Toronto. Thank you very much. Have a good day.